I started in the watch industry in 71. Um, of course, I was not very much impressed by mechanical watches at this time because I was fed up hearing my father, who worked for 35 years at Zenith and then at Rolex, talking about uh, balance wheel, escapement, things like that. And I wanted to work for the new uh, industry of the quartz watches. <laughs> started my career at Omega uh, in the team of development of the Mega Quartz, you know, the 2.4 megahertz, where we reached uh, one second per month mm. as a precision. It was fantastic, it was absolutely fabulous, a very young team. So it sounds very um, quartz oriented when I listen to you, I yeah. met you afterwards. So how did you come into the world of mechanical watches? Uh, after Omega, I was uh, hired as the head of development, and I was very young, I'm 26, I think, uh, a, a small firm uh, in La Chaux-de-Fonds called SGT. It was a group of uh, 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 brands with the middle uh, rent price range or low price range, and uh, they were introducing the uh, new quartz movements and also it was the time with the LCD and LED mm -hmm. uh, watches and uh, of course with my experience and with my studies in the mechanical watches I had both technologies more or less in my head and my hands so uh, it was good uh, uh, very interesting because we were producing at this time uh, I had nothing to do with the production of mechanical movements, but we assembled up to 16,000 a day. 16,000 It was our record. <laughs> uh, but of course it was uh, uh, low quality, because at this time the mechanica mechanical uh, watch industry tried to reduce the price uh, in prevision of the reducing prices of the electronic because all the electronic, the, the price were coming down every month. So it was really a competition and they made this error in the mechanical uh, watch industry to reduce the price and the quality. And it's only much later that they realized we should put the mechanical watches above uh, the price range and with, with the quality and, and with new functions, etc. they know that I refer um, to you as Mr. Silicium or Silicon. I can also say that you are the one person who was most dedicated, who really pushed to the limits when it comes to Silicium. You were probably the only one at some stage who really believed in it and pushed it. That was in the year 2000-2001. Now, how did the discussion start with your team when the uh, material silicon, or as we call it, silicium, came up? Uh, before answering uh, directly to these questions, uh, I'd just like to mention that uh, I, went I worked for 14 years out of the watch industry mm -hmm. in the injection molding, and I was confronted with customers, or I had the pleasure to work for customers in the car industry. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the car industry, uh, you've got to be open-minded, you respect the deliveries, uh, you, you've got to have zero defect mm -hmm. and things like that. When I came back to the watch industry at Julius Nada, I realized that the watch industry didn't change. I uh, dropped my year or what you say in English, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, uh, to be open-minded to new technology, new materials and things like that. And the silicium uh, story 
uh, started with the invention of the freak. Established, but they still purchased their escapements uh, from Nivarox. So basically, you said we have to produce the heart uh, yes. ourselves, which, which is the, the heart beating, which is the escapement. And of course, uh, we started to uh, manufacture the, the, the part, the components for the uh, uh, Ludwig's es new escapement, mm -hmm. but it didn't work. It didn't work because of the inertia of the escape wheels. So uh, I scratched my head and we said, okay, let's try with aluminum. And uh, we, we tried with aluminum, it worked. So I went to the engineer school in uh, Le Lox with uh, filming the how the escapement worked with a very rapid, ultra rapid uh, camera. camera yeah. And we compared the behavior with a heavy material, steel and aluminum. Mm -hmm. And my friend, uh, Michel Vermo, who is the son of the guy who saved all the, the stamping things for, for El Primero, he told me, but you know, that at CSCM, I know that they make micro mechanical parts out of silicium. I said, okay, I'll go there mm -hmm. and we try. And when we realized how good the silicium was because we could, because of the, the, the uh, technology to uh, machine, so the, the dry, the deep reactive iron etching, uh, we had a, a freedom of design. We could make uh, two shapes which were not machinable. We immediately saw the advantage of this technology, so I didn't invent the silicon the silicon, the use of silicon, I was the one who had the guts to put them in a watch and to put those watches on the market. But that was the start. So when you go back um, to that time, you must have had some obstacles. You said it didn't work at the beginning, well, because you didn't have silicium yet, but then you started with silicium. Was there a lot of opposition within the company or within um, technical friends or from the industry in general or from the consumer? Wha what was the biggest uh, obstacle? In fact, fortunately, Ulysse Nada at this time was just in the, the rebirth phase. Mm. So we were a small company in quantities, a great company by the name and by the history, mm. but a small company in the presence on the market. And we were allowed to take risks. In fact, probably big firms uh, should uh, would not have been able to to take that risk and, and put uh, on the market. Uh, some journalists opposed and saying that uh, no, but uh, uh, still there is a, a resource uh, in the world for so many years, centuries. But silicon, we don't know. And I knew jolly well, having worked in the uh, electronic, that we were not going to consume more than. Mm. One, a one ppm mm. of the consumption mm. of the microelectronics, mm. so silicon was uh, not a problem of uh, resource. In the company, no obstacle at all. Enthusiasm, in including the one of the owner at this time, was needed. That was the beginning. Now, that could you walk our audience from the very beginning, that first escapement in silicon in the Freak, 2001? Next step at some stage was the anchor escapement and yes. then the silicium hairspring. Can you help us to understand that development? Yes, I in fact, uh, there are two enormous advantages with the uh, silicon. That he has no, uh, it's, it stays elastic. If you bend a piece of steel, it goes like that and it comes back nearly to the same position. 
but uh, you can bend, you can bend, and then it, it stays like that. With silicon, you bend it, it comes back. You bend it, it comes back. You bend it too much, it breaks. Mm -hmm. So there is no plastic deformation, which is a big advantage. The second big advantage that I already mentioned was the, the way to produce it with a mask. You can make the shape you wish. Mm -hmm. So it helps the engineer. It gives a new freedom to the engineers, to the inventors, to make the most of uh, this material and this technology. And uh, if you see all the development that Ulysses Nardin with the anchor escapement, but uh, then the, the force constant and, and other items, it's absolutely fabulous what, what you say. I hope uh, that uh, you will see some image. And then the CSM was very happy that we at Ulysses Nardin had put an escapement on Market. on the market and said but maybe there is a future for us what kind of uh, other components uh, we should produce and Ludwig and myself thought about it and we said because of the plastic properties mm -hmm. of the silicon the hairspring would be something fabulous because we know that how many steps you need to make a, a normal metal uh, uh, hairspring, it's very, very difficult. So this was a goal. So we tried and we made prototypes together with CSEM. And uh, we tried it. It was excellent with the elasticity, catastrophic with the uh, uh, thermic behavior, the behavior towards temperature. Temperatures, yeah. And sillyly enough, I didn't know that there was a simple solution. But CSM, they uh, found the, the way to do it with the coating with the um, SEO2, which compensate to. That's why now uh, the all the hair springs on the market uh, made by uh, CSM and Swat Group and Rolex, Patek and Ulysses Nardin are uh, silicon coated with uh, SEO2. SEO2.